for this project, we're going to need something to mount the fuse block and circuit breaker in the engine compartment. In my case, I want Overland Equip's auxiliary fuse block bracket. The bracket comes custom designed for the second gen Tacoma, as well as other generation Tacoma, 4Runner, and FJ Cruisers. The bracket is designed to hold either a 12 fuse block or a 6 fuse block from Blue Sea Systems. The fuse block I'm going with is a 12 fuse version. We'll also need a circuit breaker to protect our new fuse block and the accessories we'll be plugging into the auxiliary panel. When selecting your circuit breaker, add up your proposed amperage of all your accessories to come up with the desired amperage you will want for your breaker. I went with a 90 amp breaker as I'll be using this panel primarily for lighting and switch relays. To connect all these items together, we will need some battery cable. I went with 6 gauge wire as my runs will be super short and 6 gauge is capable of handling up to 200 amps, well beyond our circuit breaker and our expected draw. To connect those cables to components, we will need to crimp on copper lugs. This kit offers several different sizes of lugs for several different mounting bolts. For this setup, I'll be using 6 gauge quarter and 6 gauge 3 8 sizes. Since I'll be adding cables from the battery to the fuse block, I've chosen to upgrade my battery terminals to a set of mil spec terminals that will give a solid connection to the battery as well as more flexibility in the future. Other miscellaneous items we will need is fabric wire loom wrap, split cable conduit, and some zip ties to keep our wiring protected. Lastly, we'll we need an assortment of blade fuses for our fuse block. Fuse size will be determined by your accessory. Links to all the products I'm using in this video will be in the description below. The tools we will need for this install are 10 mm, 13 mm, and a 14 mm wrench. Cable cutters capable of cutting our primary battery cable. Heavy duty crimpers for our six gauge copper lugs. A heat gun or butane torch to shrink the heat shrink material. And a pocket knife to cut the insulation from the wires. You will also need some standard wire cutters, wire strippers, and a crimping tool for wires connecting the fuse block. I'm using heat shrink connectors for a strong water type connection. Links to all these tools will be in the description below. To start the installation process, we need to mount our fuse block and circuit breaker to our bracket. Remove the cover from the fuse block, set that aside. Orientation of our fuse block on our bracket, we want to have our negative on this side and our positive to the right. Our circuit breaker is going to come mount right here. Our battery, battery cable is going to come right into the circuit breaker. Out of the circuit breaker, over here to the positive. Negative here is going to come to the side and mount to the chassis. To mount this to the bracket, I'm using some M580 screws. Washer on the back side, and a nylon locking nut. If you're not gonna use nylon locking nuts, you wanna put some Loctite on the threads to make sure this does not come un un loose inside the vehicle. down you don't want to tighten them too much because you can crack the plastic case all right once those are on there we'll move our attention to the circuit breaker circuit breaker same thing and again you don't want to over tighten them because they can potentially crack the black the mounting pit lugs on the circuit breaker. Okay. All right, once those are installed, we now move on to the wiring. The first wire we're going to do is going to be our positive wire from our fuse block, fuse block to our circuit breaker. For that, we need our six gauge wire and we need to put a lug on one end to get that prepared. Um, to do this, I clean, I, I'll cut the end to give myself a clean start. Get rid of that. And then 
this is going to be a six gauge, three eighths hole. Perfect. And for that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our knife and we're gonna clear some of the insulation away. We don't wanna clear a lot. We wanna clear just enough for that to go right inside the lug and not have um, exposed cable sticking outside of it. So we're gonna start right here, come around, and be careful you're not pressing too deep into the insulation because you can cut the wires. And looks like I need to go just a little bit more. Good, right there, perfect. Now we have our wires exposed. We place our lug on there. Make sure we've got just enough inside there. So we have insulation just sticking outside of the lug. Once we have our lug in place, we grab our crimpers. I already have these set up for six gauge. We'll press that right inside there. And then crimp that. And then we have a solid crimp. Once we've made our crimp, we want to put some heat shrink to cover up the portion that we crimped. To do that, we take a piece of shrink tubing, place that over. And we don't want to push that too far because we do want this to be flat. And if this heat shrink tubing is up on that, it will push it away and we won't have as much contact on the face of this lug. So we'll place that on there just exactly where we want it. We'll grab our butane torch and we'll start to shrink that. And the shrink tubing I'm using actually has an adhesive on the inside. So as this shrinks down and compresses around the wire, it creates a watertight seal. And there we go. That is going nowhere. So now we have our circuit breaker side. We'll go ahead and set that on there for a moment. And then we want to figure out the length that we need for our box. Now we don't want to have too much hanging down below there. Um, we just need a short amount to make the transition over to the block. But we do want to make sure that it is going straight into the block instead of having too much of a bend there uh, and that could potentially cause the, um, the strands inside the cable to break over time. So we want to give ourselves a little bit of slack but not too much. So we'll go about right. There should be good. And then we'll cut that. And we'll set that aside. Now we can create, we can attach the other one. And same go. We're gonna go ahead and actually let's get our lug. Let's figure out about where we want to cut the sh uh, sheathing on here. Now, we can attach this now while we have it outside of the vehicle. All right, that's nice, tight, and snug. It's not gonna go anywhere. And then we can even take that and just bend that down just the slightest bit, give ourselves a little more relief there. And there we go. Now we'll move on to the mm. 
Now, if any keen viewers noticed, I was actually on the wrong side for measuring the cable from the circuit breaker to the fuse box. I was going from here to here. Fortunately for me, and this is probably pure luck, but I'm actually gonna still be fine coming the other side. It's gonna be a little tighter than I would like, um, but what we can do is we can actually take this lug right here and we can bend that a little bit. That'll give us a little bit more. A little bit more wiggle room. We don't want to bend that too much. Uh, right there, that's actually plenty for our situation there. And now I've got a lot more to work with. All right, so we'll get that mounted on there. All right, now we'll take this out to the vehicle and we'll make the rest of the connections. All right, out here at the truck, we're gonna need to um, set up the space for the fraction uh, uh, My car alarm is actually, the horn for the alarm is actually in the way, so we're gonna need to move that because uh, if we try to install the bracket as it sits right now, it, it's gonna interfere. So we'll go ahead and relocate that. Right now I'm just gonna remove it and move it to the side. Okay, with that moved out of the way, we now need to um, remove any bolts that you may have um, already installing a truck. Uh, mine's got a couple uh, 12 millimeter screws already attached in here. And then down, uh, you can't really see it, down on the inside of the fender well, there's a 10 millimeter uh, screw bolt uh, that we'll need to back off that will attach to the bracket. Uh, it'll clip in through here and then you'll tighten that back down to hold the leg of the bracket. So we'll get that taken care of. Okay, and to give you a better idea where that uh, lower bolt is on the inside of the fender well, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and all right, and we'll try and get a good image in there for you. Uh, just inside there, you can kind of make it out right there, uh, and that's just inside the fender well on the top. And it looks like it's holding a couple charging lines. So uh, you'll just back that out. You don't need to remove it. You're just gonna back it out enough for the bracket to install on. Okay. And for the upper two, uh, it's Overland Equipped actually supplies two brand new uh, bolts to mount that into. Uh, but we're not gonna install that just yet. Um, right now we need to run the other line from our battery to our circuit breaker. Um, so we need to figure out how long that needs to be. So we'll set that in place for the moment being. We'll grab our cable here. And I'm going to be running a dual battery system uh, relatively soon here. Uh, the second battery is going to be sitting on the inside. The starter battery is going to be are sitting on the outside, start a battery on the inside. Um, so eventually this line will need to come around over here to the front. Um, so I want to account for that uh, in the length that I'm doing right now. If you're not going to be doing a dual battery setup or you're not going to be having um, any modifications to your battery placement, um, just run it front the circuit breaker around your fuse, fuse your engine fuse block to the terminal. And we'll go ahead and get that. So you would just run it basically around here to the bottom of the, feet, the circuit breaker. Uh, me, I'm personally gonna give myself a considerable amount more because I am gonna need to come up here. 
So I'm probably gonna run this from the front here down uh, uh, around this fuse box to the underside. So I'll give myself a little extra room here. Uh, we can always tuck away extra cable if we need to. So that should be, that right there should be plenty. So we'll go ahead and cut that. And then we'll attach our ends. And when I get the ends attached on here, I'll be back to get this installed. All right, now that we have our cable made up, uh, we wanna go ahead and disconnect the battery. Uh, before we do anything electrical, we wanna take the battery terminals off uh, so we eliminate any chance of um, blowing a fuse, uh, causing ground arcing, anything like that. So we'll get this taken off and then we'll uh, work on attaching our ground and our positive to the, the circuit breaker. Um, the uh, military terminals, it's usually best to loosen uh, these before you take them off the posts, only because once you pull them off the posts, it's hard to hold it and break these loose. Um, so I'll break these loose just the, the smallest amount and then take the terminal off. wasn't too tight and then we'll take the, the whole terminal off here okay. and we'll set that aside okay and then we'll do the same for the positive I'll loosen that just a little bit and then remove the terminal all right now, once we have the terminals off we can then go ahead and connect our positive to the fuse block. If we pull this around, um, yeah, I believe this is a fort, and I'm forgetting whether that's a 14 millimeter or not. Uh, but right now, this very moment, that's not the whole. Well, then important. So we'll get that on there, attached. Get this tightened down. Once we have this attached on the back side, we can go ahead and install the bracket in place. And let's take a look. I believe this is a 14, yes. All right, so before we tighten that down, we kind of want to see where our cable is coming out. Um, I'm going to be running my cable uh, eventually this way. So in preparation of that because I do have a lot to work with here um, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it coming off the breaker and out the back and just tighten that down pretty snug all right let me make sure this other one's on there snug all right now once that's in place we can go ahead and mount this to the vehicle. Uh, I want to make sure, you know, the ground wire in there, I want to make sure that's clear so I can fish that out. Um, that This will now go down in here inside that that 10 millimeter nut that we just backed out. And there's a little bracket that's holding on the what look like charge line, so we'll need to get it in between there. And it looks like a may not have backed it off just enough. Back that up just a little bit more. That should be plenty in there, it dropped right in. And then we'll slide that forward, backward. And then we'll get... <sighs> no, 
Uh, we'll get our two supplied bolts. Set it in there. And with the fuse block in there, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but we'll get those mounted in there. One. Feed this guy through. It'll be a little easier now. All right. For the time being, we'll just run this down through here. Because again, this is going to end up in the front, not where it is right now. But for right now, we just want to run this over here, and then we'll get this tightened down. This should be 14, which is right here. And actually. Like that might be a 13. Yeah, 13 is gonna fit. Okay. Let me make sure that's in place down at the bottom. I'm just snug these up right now. And then we get a pin monitor bolt on the inside of the fender well. Tightened up. attach the positive to here we're going to go ahead and route our negative from the body to the fuse block remove the cover here and we'll figure out our distance from here to here with a little bit of slack we'll probably put a, a pigtail in here um, give ourselves a little bit of room and then uh, we'll go ahead and attach that so we'll go ahead and make a negative cable for this and I'll be right back all right nope it's not another day just got a little warm had to take the sweatshirt off i've um, got my ground cable made up um on the end where the fuse box is i went ahead and took um, placed this in my vise and uh, bent it over a little bit so it would drop straight down from the fuse block the back side wasn't so wasn't that big of a deal because there's a lot of room back here um, so I didn't bend that one, uh, but the negative we definitely want to put, you, you're really close to um, the engine compartment fuse box that you're going to want to drop that down. Um, so we just put a little bit of a bend on there and we'll go ahead and get that attached now. Fuse box. And get this one here attached. So I got that tightened down, then went ahead and made sure this side was tightened down as well. Uh, then we can throw the cover back on here. Okay, and then we'll attach the 
ground to our body. And Okay, now we'll get our ground attached to the body. And I went ahead and already disconnected the battery ground from the terminal here. And then we'll just feed this one up from underneath, along with the battery. And we'll get those attached back to the body. tighten that because there is a great possibility of actually uh, stripping those threads out so you don't want to crank on it too hard all right now we'll get our positive hooked up to our battery terminal here and loosen that already but even though it's still a little tight there all right so we'll get that off of there and then we can pull this off of here because this will now be relocated to our fuse block so we'll get this attached and then let's see we actually probably want to go off of let's see now we'll leave it on the side it's on um, you definitely want to remember that you're going to be coming off in this direction like so um, and I think actually I am going to go off the inside here okay so we'll get that attached on the inside get our starter cable back on there and then get that threaded back on all right and we'll get that tightened up And once it's on the battery, we'll final tighten it. All right, so now we have everything connected. We can go ahead and get it connected up. Um, on the, the breaker, go ahead and make sure the breaker is off um, when you connect the battery back. Um, that way, if, if you did um, connect anything wrong, um, I mean, obviously it would trip, uh, but at this point right now, if you do have anything, connected to the box um, I would re I would disconnect it first before you hook it up to the battery um, just to test um, and then once you've done in your test and you've verified you have 12 bolts um, coming into the fuse block and coming off the appropriate terminals then you can go ahead and connect your accessories up to this uh, but we'll get this go ahead we'll go ahead and get this connected back up and my first problem I'm already noticing, um, I'm gonna have to swap these because I cannot come off of the battery terminal at an angle like it is, uh, just because of where it connects, um, it is too far in on the battery. So we're gonna go ahead and take this out and we'll swap these. So I have one outside one inside terminal starter all right what that's going to allow me to do is now come off the back with all my cables okay so we'll get that tightened back up and again we're just going to snug this down for now because once it's on the terminal, we'll be able to tighten it a lot better, a lot more easily. All right, so we'll get that connected back on there. And this is a half inch, so we'll get to grab our half inch. And get this tightened 
down. And it's not going anywhere. And then this goes high. I don't like the way that's coming off of there. And again, yeah, you're gonna want to round, you're probably gonna route yours around the block, the, the fuse box, the, the engine fuse box. But because I am going to be running a dual battery setup, my positive for the fuse block is gonna end up up here in the front corner. So I've gone ahead and changed this to um, have longer length. So you're gonna come around here so it won't be sitting up above the fuse block like this. Up. All right. Well, let's tighten up there. Okay, the same thing. We'll get our 13 and our. And then we'll go ahead and connect our negative. All right. Nah, it's not going to go anywhere. Now, we are live. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a multimeter and we're gonna test this. Uh, we're gonna set the breaker, test our voltage across the fuse panel, and if we get 12 volts across, then we're, we're done. All right, so I will go grab that and we'll be right back. All right, now I've got a multimeter set up. Um, I've got it set for DC. Um, this one, uh, we'll set it for 20. 20 volts DC, um, so anything under 20 volts it'll read, um, over voltage it'll, it'll air out. Uh, but we'll go ahead and right now, um, coming in and out, we have nothing, no voltage at all, so we know our breaker is working. So we'll go ahead and set the breaker. Okay, everything's good so far. Now we should have coming in and going out, we should have 12 plus volts, and we have 12.67, that's perfect. All right, now I have a 15 amp fuse set in here. Um, so we should be reading 12.67 uh, volts from our negative to our positive, perfect. And then each one after that without a fuse in it should be reading negative. All right, and to verify we have our polarity set correctly, we have our fused terminal. Come over to negative, we have 12.67 volts. Excellent. There we have it. Put the cover back on there, and we're all set. Now we'll just um, hook up our accessories to the block here. Um, I have two accessories that I've actually unplugged from the battery terminal um, that I'll get uh, hooked up to our new fuse panel. Um, and then in the future, we'll have other accessories. Um, I don't know how long I'm gonna run this setup, only because of the simple fact that um, there are several items on this truck that are going to be installed that are going to need a relay. Uh, and I don't want to be running a ton of wires up to the cab for switches. Um, I could go with an S-Pod, but um, I, I really can't justify the expense of one. And everything the S-Pod does, I can do for a fraction of the cost. Um, so eventually I may end up... Um, building a different bracket for in here to um, have a, re a relay bank and then uh, but I'll still use the same panel same fuse panel same circuit breaker um, I'll just have a different bracket that'll allow me to uh, run a bank of relays inside the engine bay um, that way I can use um, I can set up a negative switch switching relay and that way um, I'm running one wire up to the cab and to a switch that will um, be grounded and when the switch is on it supplies ground to the relay switch is off it terminates that ground so a um, whole lot easier doing a negative um, switch relay because you're only running one wire to the cab um, and then that way you can have uh, you can have a, a terminal block for your um, switch power inside the cab um, that's one multiple less wires you're having to run from the engine compartment or from the front of the truck the rear of the truck wherever you have your accessory to the the dash um, so that's it uh, it's a pretty easy install um, overland equipped uh, bracket with the blue c 90 amp breaker and the 12 
terminal, fuse block, and um, and also the terminals, which I did not um, go over. Uh, they're pretty simple to replace. Um, the hardest part is actually your starter cable. Um, you will have to cut that um, and then crimp on a terminal. Uh, I went ahead and replaced my starter wire as well as the wire going to my engine compartment fuse box. I did want a larger cable um, and I wanted to extend the cable for both um, since I will be running a dual battery setup. Um, so um, subscribe, um, hit that like button and follow for future videos because I will be doing a lot to this truck. Um, I have my dual battery setup. Um, I have everything came in so we'll be doing that in the near future. Um, I'll be doing a front bumper replacement. Um, I've got a C4 Overland bumper that's coming in and once we have that back from the powder coater we'll get that installed on the truck as well as uh, some Baja design lights, a winch. Um, I will be getting a rooftop tent here soon um, so I'll be making some support brackets for the inside of my cab um, topper. Um, I have a, a, a bed camper shell. Uh, it's, it's a reinforced shell but I still want to reinforce the rack on top because as it sits right now I believe it is a 450 pound static weight limit for the top so I will be making um, some substructure to support additional weight. So again subscribe, hit the like button and I'll see you in the next video.